Now it's time for Global Insight, where we speak to experts from around the world on issues making headlines. Will Seoul and Tokyo finally mend fences and become friendly neighbours amid regional tensions? Hopes are certainly high as South Korea's President-elect Yoon seok yeol has decided to send a delegation to Japan over the weekend, ahead of his inauguration in May, making Tokyo the number two destination for his diplomatic envoys who visited Washington earlier this month. The move is very significant, proving that Yoon is sincerely seeking to establish future-oriented ties, as he pledged, after bilateral relations hit their lowest point in 2019 during the Moon and Abe administrations. It seems that Japan is receiving this optimistically, expressing anticipation for a possible leader summit or a high-level dialogue in the weeks to come. So we discuss what's ahead with Professor Eamon Dong from Kongju National University. Professor Lim, as always, it's lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Right. Now, first of all, please, um, Professor, tell us more about the seven member delegation that's going to go to Japan on the 24th. And this, of course, includes National Assembly Deputy Speaker uh, Chong jin -suk. Now, what will the delegation's mission be and how do you expect them to get on with Japanese uh, lawmakers and key officials in Tokyo? Sure. Um, let me briefly uh, talk about uh, who delegations are first. Again, the, uh, Mr. Chong jin uh he, he is a veteran uh, politician and uh, he has been a member of uh, Korea, Japan, Japan, Korea Parliamentarians um, Union. So he has been known um, as a politician who is very knowledgeable uh, about the uh, Japan, Korea, Korea, Japan relations. And he's actually district. I mean, actually, my university is located in Gongju City, and he represents this uh, area. Uh, but this area um, has had a very long and, how to say, very deep relations um, with the uh, Japan historically and culturally. So I think, uh, you know, he leads the group, uh, the, uh, the seven um, uh, members of the delegation. I think that's a very uh, good message, I think, uh, to the uh, Tokyo, too. And uh, when the uh, uh, Korean delegation visited uh, Washington, D.C. recently, uh, it was led by the uh, Mr. Park Jin. Um, but uh, the member actually were pretty much mixed. For example, Japan expert uh, was included or China expert was included this time too. Again, of course, Japan experts are um, included, but at the same time, um, U.S. Uh, foreign uh, foreign um, U.S. experts or North Korean experts, they are included too. So it's, a, I think, a very good group. And that also indicates that, um, you know, this uh, delegation is trying to uh, send some message again to, to Tokyo. This is not only about the uh, uh, historical issues, for example, and this is more about the uh, uh, current ongoing serious uh, issues, foreign and the security issues um, over the Korean Peninsula and uh, more broadly speaking um, in this region, again, East Asia or even in the Pacific. And Professor, well, compared to 2017 when uh, incumbent President Moon was, when he secured his electoral victory and after speaking to the then US President Trump, his second phone call was with Chinese President Xi Jinping. But in contrast to that, this time around, uh, President-elect Yoon, he spoke with the Japanese PM Fumio Kishida after speaking with Joe Biden. So would you say that this is a clear sign of alignment with the US and Japan and other allies in terms of foreign policy priorities? Well, um, uh, President-elect uh, Yoon song yeol when he had a, a TV uh, discussion, television discussion, you know, he uh, clearly said that, you know, uh, I'm going to meet the uh, American leader first and then probably Japan and then China and then North uh, as a response to a, a question from the uh, um, um, from the, the, the coordinator uh, for the attend panel discussion. So that uh, he already, I think he already um, revealed um, his priority. And um, that indicates that again, of course, uh, that indicates the new uh, incoming government's uh, foreign and security policy priority. But at the same time, I do see uh, it reflects the change of the situations now. Again, five years ago, it was 
pretty much different from the today's situation. So I think uh, the incoming government sees the change, the game, changed uh, security situations, not only in the uh, uh, East Asia, uh, globally too. Um, so well, um, I agree with that comments. Again, um, the new government uh, is trying to show um, the, the trilateral uh, cooperation, US, Japan, Korea. Um, this is pretty much important um, to stabilize um, the security situation in this region. Um, it uh, also has a pretty much big, um, how would you say, influence. It will have a, a big influence uh, to the global affairs too. And of course, uh, North Korea is obviously a very key issue for Seoul and uh, Tokyo and Washington, of course, and well, with the uh, changing dynamics here in the Indo-Pacific region, many security experts believe that South Korea can no longer rely on China or the likes of Russia to really help and intervene when it comes to uh, really trying to rein in the North. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Um... Yeah, Ukraine, again, uh, of course, Russia caused the war, uh, but all this Russia-Ukraine um, conflict and war, that, um, that really uh, gave a serious warning signals, um, not only just to um, just European countries, but also to the East Asian countries too. Uh, it does have many uh, serious implications. Again, number one, um, as many IR theorists, um, realists to say, uh, again, the self-help is the, the probably the best way because nobody will, you can ask um, nobody to just help us, you know, when, you know, you really face the trouble and the international affair. Of course, alliance, that is why uh, it is important, but alliance is the secondary. It cannot be really the fundamental solution. So I think many countries uh, witnessed the situations and they uh, were um, really surprised with all this, you know, uh, unusual situation. And many, um, of course, Japan too, and Korea as well, or, or Taiwan too. You know, these countries were um, very, um, how would you say, uh, got, got lots of pressure from the uh, volatile uh, situations these days. So having had this kind of situation, of course, we don't want to be um, um, too much um, opponent or against um, Russia and China because we have, of course, economic ties um, and the many other uh, important issues with those countries as well. But at the end of the day, um, the security is really the fundamental mission um, for any state. And as long as, um, you know, the situation is like this, um, again, um, probably um, we need to rethink uh, about our own de uh, deterrence cap capacity and how really enough, how strong enough our uh, current security um, system is. Um, so I think that's a kind of, you know, overall concern of um, many of Korean people too. Well, international relations scholar Joseph Nye recently said that, well, if there's a silver lining to be found, it is pushing allies closer amid all these geopolitical uncertainties. And certainly with Seoul and Tokyo, um, as well as they have many historical issues to overcome. Now, bilateral ties sunk to the lowest level in decades after the Moon government um, nullified the 2015 agreement to uh, resolve the comfort women issue, uh, which Fumio Kishida actually played a strong role in. Uh, then there were further disputes about compensating South Koreans who were forced into labor by Japan uh, during the war times and, well, textbook issues, uh, territorial issues on top of that. So there are a long list of historical disputes that the two countries need to get, get through, really. And how do you think the two sides are going to address these lingering disputes? Well, um, I think uh, both, uh, both Seoul and Tokyo um, agree that, again, the, the situation is not sustainable. Uh, this kind of very chill uh, relationship uh, between the two governments is really not good for anyone, and it's not even sustainable. Um, so um, I think both uh, want to uh, make a good a chance uh, to break through the stalemate situation. Of course, historical issues are important 
and uh, sensitive issues and very difficult issues to solve. Um, but my probably recommendation or many other probably experts will, uh, I think, uh, give a similar um, a suggestion. Again, historical issues are, again, remain important. Uh, but I hope again the new government don't um, um, doesn't um, mix all the things together because this is one, and we have many other issues. Again, economic security issues, as I just mentioned. You know, security concerns are increasingly getting more and more serious. Um, so my point is, you know, if, if we need to think about, uh, we need to recall uh, the lessons from the uh, Park Geun-hye administration's failure, because their approach uh, was, you know, we need to solve this issue first, and then we're going to move on. So that kind of approach is, I don't think that's constructive uh, for the uh, um, the two countries' relationship and the uh, and the whole region. So um, I think uh, Tokyo um, has some kind of sympathetic mind with um, this kind of you know, comments as well. So, well, we'll see. Um, again, the, I hope the delegations um, can have a constructive uh, conversation uh, with the Japanese counterpart too. It looks like both governments have to be very pragmatic and very focused on mm -hmm. the now, I suppose. And well, both sides, they've emphasised that they've emphasised that there are many common challenges that uh, Seoul and Tokyo can cooperate on. So what do you think will be the priority tasks uh, for both governments? Well, there are many important issues. For example, um, you know, climate change too. And it's a serious issue. Uh, and the Korea, Japan, like countries really need to uh, seriously work on um, and even together cooperation is necessary as well. Uh, but probably realistically speaking, again, the North Korean uh, issue is, I think, uh, going to be, can be um, number one priority for the both government. Uh, because if you think about the uh, series of uh, provocations, tests done by, conducted by the North, uh, you know, the, the, today it's only April uh, 20, but until today, you know, they have conducted um, 13 times. Um, so this is uh, unusual. Uh, this really creates volatile situation in this region. Um, so I think a do, to govern, the two governments um, will prioritize um, how to deal with um, this North Korea situation. Um, I think they, they're going to talk about this as a, uh, as a number one priority. And it is necessary too. And Professor, if uh, Seoul and Tokyo do manage to mend fences, then do you think this improved relationship will boost South Korea's chances of joining the uh, CPTPP, the Comprehensive mm -hmm. and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership? Because in, uh, it seemed that during the Moon government, um, most economic analysts here in Seoul doubted that Japan was happy about Seoul joining in the initiative. But now do you think uh, maybe the mood is changing? Yeah, um, again, um, we need to really change the air first. Again, uh, if you think about the Japanese public sentiments uh, about the Korea, it is not good at all either. Um, so what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, again, the public diplomacy is really um, important these days. Um, in that in that context, from that context, uh, of course, as you just um, asked, the CPTPP can be, I uh, think, uh, one option uh, we need to and we can think uh, very seriously. Uh, Korea has been much more aggressive uh, to the uh, um, FDA uh, compared to, relatively speaking, compared to Japan. So we already got the uh, uh, FDA, many bilateral FDA, uh, with the, the countries who joined the TPP, the uh, formerly it, it was called the TPP. So we already got the, uh, the, those you know, bilateral um, FDAs. So that is why uh, our government's uh, approach has been more like a wait and see policy. And TPP, uh, as we all remember, um, it was um, the initiative was um, taken by the Obama administration, but the Trump administration, they flipped the, the, the stance. And then now um, the new 
um, how would you say, the new atmosphere uh, arose about the uh, CPTPP. So if um, Japan, uh, if Tokyo is really uh, wants to have you know, Korea like a partner uh, in this um, in this framework, I think uh, it can be a good option to think about uh, because again, um, as I mentioned earlier, economic security, all this restructuring uh, global supply chain um, is another like important issue um, these days. So yeah, again, um, I'm not saying we have to join the CPTPP um, very fastly, but I think uh, it can be a very a good option we can think about. And Professor, lastly, before we go, now, when the two leaders, the South Korean president-elect, uh, Yoon seok yeol and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, spoke on the phone last month, they both agreed to improve relations, of course, and um, they also expressed hope to meet in person soon. Do you see mm -hmm. a, a summit happening uh, in the near time, uh, in the near future? And also, what are the next steps from this point uh, to restoring bilateral ties? Well, I, I hope so. I hope you know they can have a summit um, soon. You know, card meeting can be uh, one possibility um, if they have a quad meeting in Tokyo and uh, if they invite again the president to um, Yoon. If so, that can be a one option we can consider. Um, but uh, beside that kind of, you know, more like a multilateral um, meeting, I, I uh, would like to suggest that again, the new government can have a bilateral summit uh, soon, hopefully. Uh, between the election, you know, the Japanese um, the government, they, they're going to meet the another election, again, the Opera House election uh, will be in July. So hopefully uh, between um, the election, after after the election results are revealed, um, if the Kishida um, government remains uh, pretty much stable, and after that, and before um, 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 August 15th, which is the for us again the Liberation Day. Um, I uh, do think uh, the Liberation Day, August 15th, uh, can be um, another like a uh, um, critical juncture because you know on that day uh, South Korea uh, will also you know recall all this kind of you know historical issues. And um, Japan as well, you know, for them, um, it, is, uh, it is not that glorious day, of course. Um, it is the, uh, uh, the day, um, um, you know, they surrendered and they uh, were defeated. So, um, you know, both uh, will, again, recall the historical issues um, on that day. So that is why I would like to see a uh, summit um, before, again, the, before the uh, um, August 15th. But that's my just, you know, personal um, idea and um, uh, that's my personal hope. <laughs> but uh, again, uh, I'd love to see uh, uh, the bilateral summit uh, soon, before too late. Well, that was Yi Min Zong, Associate Professor at the Division of International Studies at Kongju National University. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me.